Hey everybody, Scott Detweiler here, and welcome back to another thrill-packed episode of Couch to Photoshop. And today we're going to talk about texturing. In order to apply a texture to this image, we first have to get a selection of our main subject. So we're going to talk a little bit about the selection tools and the refinement process. And then we're going to go ahead and apply a texture. And then we're going to go ahead and bend that texture to match the paper. Um, I find that trick is one that a lot of people look at and go, I don't know how he did that. And it is not hard. Uh, but there's a little bit of planning that goes into it and a little bit of uh, trickery that I want to discuss. Uh, so we're going to use this picture of Jennifer again. Uh, this is the one that we uh, expanded the canvas on. We went from this to this uh, in our last episode. And I should mention as well that you can always borrow bits and pieces from other images during the same shoot. Um, oftentimes I'll do a light test or two and uh, without the model in the scene. And then I have that background without anyone in it. Uh, so also handy to go and grab other frames or even from other sessions if you shot uh, similar lighting or maybe a flatter lighting and you can borrow from a background feel free you know those are those are other options so if that other episode left you a little confuzzled as to how you can figure your way out of a situation where you don't have enough room um, you can always borrow it from someplace else okay so uh, first of all we need to get a selection of our model and there's a whole lot of selection tools in Photoshop uh, the one I want you to never use is uh, the magic wand tool. This used to be your de facto selection tool. And the reason we don't use it is because it leaves a very jagged edge. Uh, so if we zoom in and uh, look at this, I'm going to fill the selection with black, by the way. Um, cute little uh, trick you can do in your keyboard is, uh, I, I remember it as the alt key is on the left and the control key is on the right. So uh, if you look at your colors here, black is on the left and white is on the right. So that would tell you which color you're going to fill with. So if I hold down control and backspace, it will fill with white. And if I hold down alt and backspace, it will fill with black. So cute little trick. But you see how jagged the selection is. Um, so this tool is never handy. Uh, it used to be what you needed. And now it's just terrible. There's a much better option. And that is the quick selection tool here. Uh, so this works like a brush, so you could expand or uh, contract it as needed, and you basically just go over your model with it. Now there's two schools of thought on this on this brush. You can either select what you want or select what you don't want and then invert the selection. Uh, meaning, uh, if we start over here and I could just select the gray paper, for example. Um, now it may be overly aggressive this way, and that's okay. Uh, we could just go and subtract things out. It's not going to make a perfect selection the first time out, and that's fine. Uh, I'm going to deselect this. I prefer to actually select the model. The reason being that I think this brush has a bit of brains to it, and it sees what we're selecting. And you notice when you let off of your selection, it'll take a second and kind of ponder. Uh, and I think that's it, looking at what you have, what you've selected. And you can even kind of give it some information by holding down in your Alt or Option key and minus uh, some of this gray background, for example. Uh, that helps it in the refinement process, at least in my mind. <laughs> uh, who knows if that's actually how it works or not, but uh, it sure seems like it does. So I need to make my brush a little smaller here, and I'm just going to go and select uh, her arms like this. And we're going to do the other side here. And you notice I'm not taking the world's greatest care uh, at this point, and we don't really have to worry about that. What we want to worry about, though, is over selection. So, for example, this gray here, we don't want that. So let's just go and subtract that out. I'm okay if we miss some hair, but I don't want it selecting that gray background. This is bad. And I'll show you why in just a second. Okay, so we have a really rough selection. I'm not going to worry about the fingers yet. Okay, so now we go. I see I'm missing her eye there. Uh, now we go, and there's a select, select mask. Now, I'm not going to show you this tool today. I'm going to show you the legacy version, which is the one that I use uh, because I like the way that it behaves. And to get to it, you just basically hold down shift when you select this from the menu and it will bring up this refine edge. And this is an older version of refine edge again, uh, but it's one that I like. Uh, so basically you're just going to select this brush here and you can see my settings here. Um, I have always just leave them the same. It, it seems to work really well for me. And so I just go and you'll just highlight the part that you missed before, like her hand. Um, you go and say go over some of her hair here. And I want to be careful not to like go over that area because it may not understand, um, I'm trying to zoom in here, uh, what we're trying to pick. So in that case, oops, I'm going to make my brush small, hold down Alt and deselect just part of that. And again, it should go back and figure out, oh, you didn't need to pick that gray background. That's right, you don't like that color. 
uh, because again, we've given that information. All right, so I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm just gonna select little tiny bits of the hair as I go, and it should work fine. Again, parts of the dress that we may have missed before. And we're not going for the world's best selection here. You'll find that the way that we do the texturing, it's pretty forgiving, uh, but we do want to take some time and do our best uh, if possible. But I'm not gonna take hours and go through everything. Now, sometimes you'll get a selection like this, which looks like it kinda got part of her hand. If you hold on Alt or Option and click inside of her hand here, it should understand that you mean that entire area. So that helps a bit. And there we go. You may have to fiddle with it a bit. Okay. And that should be pretty good, except for the front of the dress here. So again, just resizing my brush, going over the front of the dress. And the floor here. I'm gonna hold on my Alt key and get rid of some of that floor. And it's uh, it's trying to say, no, no, that's, that's an area that you want. <laughs> that's fighting with me, that's okay. For what we're doing, again, we're going to be able to get away with murder in this, and I'll show you that trick. So this dress is somewhat translucent, so I'm okay with the selection being somewhat translucent. I hit OK. And we should see our marching ants display around her now, and we have the selection that we need, uh, mostly. Um, Miss part of her nose here, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. There we go. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, this is plenty good. All right, so now what do we do? Well, I always save my selection first because I'm gonna want it a couple times and although there are other ways to get to it, um, I'm oftentimes you know, sloppy and then, oh, I forgot I need that selection again. So I just go up to select, save selection, and I call it one because yeah, that's an awesome name. <laughs> now what, what's gonna happen is you'll be able to pull that back anytime by going to load selection and picking one from here uh, or the way that I do it is you just go to channels and control click on this. So if we don't have something selected and I just control click on the channel, it will load it. And we're gonna go over how to use these channels more in another episode, because there's some pretty cool things you can do in here. But this is the quick and dirty way to load a selection that you've already saved. You just come in here and control click on the thumbnail and it will select it for you. Very simple. Okay, once we have that done, we can get rid of our selection because we know we have it saved. And let's go ahead and grab a texture. So we're gonna use one from my texture pack number five called Europa here. Um, you can bag that if you would like. I'll put the link in the description below. Uh, and I greatly appreciate it if you do purchase these because they help me obviously create more. Okay, as you see, this layer came in as a smart object. Uh, that means that we can resize this all day long and it won't be destroyed. Uh, where if we were working with a rasterized version of this, uh, for example, let's just right click and choose rasterize layer and then control T to change its size. Let's say we make it tiny like this, just for some unknown reason, and hit enter. And then later I go back and I wanna make it big again. Uh, you'll see that we no longer get a real high quality version of it. It's, it's been destroyed. Uh, so leaving things as smart objects is fine if you know you're going to be scaling them around a bit. And we're gonna do that to this initially. So uh, what we could do uh, is we could go and again, load our selection of her, go back to our layer, and then just basically click on the mask and it will mask obviously backwards of what we're looking for. Uh, so what you can do is you can hold on your alt or option key when you click on the mask and it will do it the other direction. Okay, this looks uh, weird, but it's okay. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and change the blending mode of this to like soft light or overlay. These are the two that I really like to use the most. Uh, and it's basically performing some math uh, to say how this layer will work on what is below it. And I'll tell you, pure white doesn't give a result. So if you're, neither does black actually, um, for argument's sake, you're not really gonna see anything. So I tend to like my backgrounds to be the value that I want them to be. In this case, it's kind of a medium gray. And I know that when I apply a texture to it, I'm basically modeling that color. So I'm adding some additional colors and layers and so on. But that color gray is really going to be the value I'm using from that point forward. So that's why I tend to not shoot on pure white because I like to add textures to my images. So if you add textures and you're using white, you're gonna find that you have a lot more difficult time trying to make it look natural. It's, it's say it could certainly be done, uh, but I find this easier to just use gray. 
All right, so uh, we use soft light or we use overlay. Uh, we end up with something that's nice. It, it still doesn't color match, but it looks decent. Uh, and we can apply a hue and saturation adjustment layer, our good old friend here, and again, use this so that it applies only to the texture layer. It's a little arrow says it's gonna apply only to this texture. And oh, it's, what's funny is if I just roll this all the way to the side, it should look a lot better. And I don't know why that is, but if I roll it minus 180, every time I apply a texture, it tends to look good and bam. So this, this looks a lot nicer. Uh, and I can go ahead and I can play with the saturation of this and, and mix it up. Uh, and you don't have, you can do whatever hue you wanted to do here. Obviously there might be something here. This is nice, works with the pink in her dress. Uh, this teal is the opposite of the pink. So uh, this texture, when I made it, I, I took a lot of time in figuring out the colors that I wanted in it. And it's working out real well for me here because it's, it's helping me to create more interest in the color palette. Uh, so there we go, it's something like that. Maybe it's a bit too saturated. I don't want it to dominate the image. And then if we, we can darken or lighten that. But if we do that, note that we are going to create some sort of strange situations around her arms uh, and uh, her hair where we're going to end up with some kind of haloing. And that's one of the things I talked about when I said we don't really have to worry about our selection being that accurate uh, because if the values are the same, we'll find that we don't have like a strange halo around her. Now, there are some places here you can see that the fingers or the hand weren't that great of a selection. Uh, we can load that by, again by clicking on the thumbnail of the mask as well. And we see, sure enough, we, we kind of failed in that area. Um, so we can alt click on that mask and go into here. And you can see that we, we didn't indeed hit everything we needed to hit. Um, so we can go and we can change that by hitting a brush and then going and painting with black in here and trying to fix this up uh, if we care to um, or not. Uh, sometimes I like to work on it this way, though, uh, because now I'm done with the carrying if the mask is accurate. I just want the image to look good. Uh, so now I'll just go and kind of say, well, this is about what I need. And you don't have to be super accurate with this. No one is going to notice that level of, of uh, shift change there. See, like here, you can't even tell. Um, maybe in areas where we, we missed a spot like this, for example, if it's outside of her body, I warned you about that that's because this looks really obvious. So we wanna be careful to not do that. Let's see how the dress turned out. The dress looks pretty decent. Again, these these somewhat opaque areas look good. We gotta pick, we gotta fix that floor. There's hair in the floor there, Jess is terrible. Okay, all right, so that looks nice. Now, it does look kind of fakey though because the floor does crease. And so let's show how to kind of fix that. Um, so let's just, uh, we'll use the one we're using now, but I'm going to get rid of this layer mask and go back to my having my smart object. And I'm going to get rid of this just for this, the purposes of keeping it simple for the moment. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to change this so that this only goes on the flat part of the wall. So something like that. And now I want the bottom, I want the floor. And the way to do that, in my mind, is to just mirror it. So I'm going to do Control J to duplicate the layer. Uh, and we're still using the blending mode of overlay, by the way. So let's change that to normal so we can see what we're doing here on both these layers. Okay, so once we have that, we can go Control T and we can mirror it. And uh, so now we have a mirror version of this and we're gonna squish it up this way because if we're looking at the, the pattern across the floor, it would be compressed vertically to us. And no, we're not taking a lot of time to figure this out to be perfect, by the way. We're just going for visually good enough. And then I wanna right click and choose perspective. So we're still in free transform. And now I can grab one of these handles and pull it this way. Now, if you pull it a little bit, it's gonna feel like she's falling forward out of the frame. So I tend to pull it pretty far. Again, there are ways to measure this accurately, but we're not worrying about that today. We're just creating some art. And uh, now we have this kind of a thing. And this looks pretty legit. Uh, now we have a couple problems that, these are gotchas for this technique, by the way. So I wanna make sure you understand this part. First of all, we can't leave these as smart objects because our next operation needs to be somewhat destructive. Uh, so I need, I'm going to control click. So I hold both these uh, layers highlighted. I'm gonna right click and choose merge layers. And that's going to remove them as smart objects and merge them into a single layer now. Okay, now we're ready to go on to our next step and that's adding some believability to this. So the problem with it is if we load her, so go to channels, control click on the selection go back to my layers and then alt click on the mask so that it selects her. Uh, the problem here is that the whole background is in focus. And this is one of the biggest problems I see with people who apply textures to images. The depth of field doesn't work this way. Everything is not gonna be in focus. 
So we need to make it so that only the area where she's standing is really in focus. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of my, my selection there in my mask. We're going to go to Filter, Blur Gallery, Tilt Shift. So what Tilt Shift does is it gives us this plane where everything is in focus here and then it fades out of focus here and fades out of focus here. This is used to make things look like toys, uh, some miniaturization effects. What we're going to do here though is we're going to kind of abuse it. Um, we're going to shove it up like this. We're going to take the area that's in focus and put it right where she's standing. Ish. And then we're going to take the back part where we start to lose focus and just kind of put it near the back of the paper. And then this is the, the area where it's fading to 100% blur. So now we have some blur in the front. We have some blur in the back, but we don't have blur where she's standing. And you can kind of adjust the blur. I just have it at 15 here for giggles. And we're ready. We just to go ahead and hit OK. It'll do some thinking and then come back with uh, the completed blur. Now, if you were not sure whether or not you wanted this to work, uh, you can always make this a smart object and blur it that way. Um, that way you have the option to change it later. Uh, in this situation, I'm just keeping it simple and applying the blur to the layer as it is. Um, you could also duplicate this first in case you're, you know, <laughs> unsure as to whether you like the effect and you want to go back. At some point, you don't have to go back and reassemble this thing again. It's not a bad idea to make duplicates of layers you know you're going to do a destructive process on, thinking that maybe later on you want to go back and say, I want to do that again. Uh, you'd have to go and rebuild this background from scratch again. Okay, so when we're done, you can kind of see what we have. It's blurry up front and behind and looks good in the middle. So now when we go and go to channels, control click on her, or let's do it the other way. So we go select, load selection, pick number one. And OK. And remember, we have to hold down our Alt or Option key because we want the opposite of the selection to be our mask. Doink. And then we need to change the background to overlay. And ta-da! Now we can go back and put in our hue and saturation adjustment layer again. Clip it. And then move it all the way over or somewhere. But what did we like before? Something like this. Yeah. And maybe I want to adjust the saturation just a little bit. It's a little bit powerful. And there you go. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually duplicate this. And I'd probably do this by, uh, like I taught you earlier, not actually duplicating the texture, but by going and adding a curve or level or whatever, uh, clipping it, and then changing the blending mode on this layer to something like overlay. Now, that effectively doubles the strength of the texture without doubling the size of the texture in the file. Uh, remember, we talked about that before. Plus, the layer is there uh, in case we want to do some sort of operation with it, you know, if we want to play with it. And we just be careful with the value because if we deviate far from the value that was originally there, we're going to start to get a halo around her, and we don't want to take the time to go ahead and have to deal with that. So I may not duplicate, or I may not uh, do this over the entire layer. I may use the mask, for example and invert it, control I, go back, grab a brush, a big brush, and a big brush, and just go and brush that in, say, around the corner. So it's more of a vignette type of effect without the vignette uh, looking kind of weird. I don't like when vignettes cross in front of the, the person. This corner over here is a bit, uh, a bit dark to begin with, so maybe we do something like this. So we've now added that little bit of vignette there using the texture itself. Uh, so there you go. If you liked the video, uh, I would appreciate it if you'd bang on that like button a bit. And uh, feel free to subscribe, and I will get more videos out. Until next time, take care.